Hello, I'm Liam Anderson. I'm a horticulturist here at RHS Wisley and I look after the Cactus and Succulent collection. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make succulent spheres. So I like to make these succulent spheres as a fun and alternative way of displaying succulents in a hanging basket. But also I'm hoping this will give you some inspiration at home so you can make something similar. The first step is to get your hanging baskets. So you have metal hanging basket and hessian liners. So you have two of these. In the end, these will be attached like so to make the sphere. But first, I'll show you some of the things we need. So I have a piece of chain. So this will go right through the whole basket. So I'm actually going to attach this through the bottom of the basket liner. You can use either D shackles or carabiner clips just to secure this in place. So tighten up and make that sure that's secure. So the main reason for using this is because it can get quite heavy, especially when all the succulents are in place. So this just ensures that the whole structure is quite sound and it won't fall down. So next, two pots which have attached together using cable ties. This creates a void inside, but also makes the load lighter. It means less soil will go inside the actual sphere, therefore the structure should be lighter. So, I'm going to thread this through as well. Push that right to the bottom. And now, ready to start filling the basket packing down soil to create planting space for your succulents to root into. So I've actually mixed up a basic succulent compost. You can buy this from most garden centres. And it consists of a peat-free substrate. It's basically coir, a bit of loam, and I've also added perlite to it. So it's three parts peat-free substrate and one part perlite and that's what you can buy from most garden centres as a general succulent mix. So what I'm going to do is just fill this basket around the pots in the inside. Fill as much as I can. And then pack it down. So I've slightly dampened this compost so it's a bit easier to pack down and it also means when your succulents are planted into the sphere they won't, you won't need to water it for a week or so, so it gives them time to settle in and you won't have to water them and knock them out of place. And you want to make sure you pack that liner right down to the bottom of the basket frame. And once you've got halfway up the basket, the next step is to actually attach the top of the basket, top of the succulent sphere. So we want to make a hole in the top of this hessian, a bit in the middle. You can use snips or scissors. And then you thread your chain through. This goes on top, and your basket frame goes on top of that. I've actually cut the bottom out of this basket, so it's easier to backfill the compost back in. Just be careful of any sharp edges on the basket. And basically, you want to tuck this upper basket into the bottom basket. It can be a bit tricky. Once you've got it tucked in and it's the two basket rims are actually coming together, I like to get a few cable ties and this helps just bring the whole structure together. You can just put a few on at the start to bring the basket frame down. It helps anchor everything in place. Go, that's 
four, one in each quarter. Perfect. So now, I'm going to make this hole in the top of the basket line a bit bigger. There we go. Right. And then we can use the rest of this mix to backfill around the pots in the middle, backfill in that void until you've come right up to the top. And again, you want to be packing the soil in as tightly as you can. Another reason for using power light in this mix is to try and make the mix lighter. Um, you can use grit, a lot of succulents prefer grit, um, cacti, euphorbia, but the plants that we're going to use in this are quite happy, quite happy growing in basically just pure peat-free substrate. But um, this just makes the, the whole substance a bit lighter, the substrate a bit lighter. So I've finished backfilling, and now we're ready to go into the next stage. Um, I've just added a few more cable ties around the edge just to give it that bit more support. But now we're ready to start planting. For planting, you can use a wide range of succulents. So here I've got um, quite a mixture of things. I've got some Kalinkui, I've got some Echeveria. These are actually leaf cuttings I did in the spring and they've grown into nice small plants now, so they're ideal for planting in. Um, some more Echeveria, Agavoides, some Senecio, it's kind of different shape, different colour. So it's good to have a variety of different shapes, colours, textures, um, and you can get them really contrasting and complementing each other when you put them in. So the main thing is to think about where you want to place your plants um, as you add them on. Obviously, there's a seam here with um, cable ties, so you'll want to kind of cover them up. So I like to put maybe the trailing plants over there, coming down over the edge, and then you can put more of the Echeveria, bigger showier succulents up on top. Um, another thing you can use, and I like to use, especially just for getting it, settled in and established, is you can actually take cuttings, um, any succulents you have at home, or if you've bought some pots in, take some cuttings, let them callous for a day, and you can literally just cut a hole and pop them in. Again, because we've made the compost damp in advance, you won't have to water them, so there's no fear of knocking them out of place. There you go. So, if you get a nice pair of sharp scissors, all you do really is Cut a little incision. Try and open it up, get enough space for a root ball to go in. Or if it's just a cutting, literally make a small hole and push it in. Um, so I'm going to start with one of these, Echeveria agavoides. Sometimes you'll find there's a few dead leaves. Maybe the root ball is quite big around the plant just to get into this a smaller incision. So I like to just peel off a little bit of soil, peel off any dead leaves. Clean them up a bit, like that. And then you just gently, gently pop it into the hole. Sometimes you can get some extra compost and just push it around them if it kind of helps to firm them in place. Try a bit of this. Just in behind and push in behind. There we go. I might try some of this Senecio. So since this is a bigger plant, I'll break it up into smaller pieces. These root really, really easily from cuttings. And I'll literally just gently tease the plant apart until it comes away. There we go. And you see there's a lot of root there. Again, we want to kind of break the worst of that off. That to one side while we make a little incision. And that there. And then just, again, gently tease the roots back in. There we go. So then you have him trailing, trailing over the edge. And if we're adding cuttings, just a little 
sometimes just poke the scissors straight in. Gentle wiggle around, and then you can, it's a little crassula, just literally pop them in, like so. Or even things like Kalinkoe as well. Just make a little, little incision. Wiggle around, hook it in and firm it in. And then even, I like to do some some of these echeveria that are actually quite top heavy and a larger specimen as well. The root ball will be a bit too big, so you can literally just take a cutting. Again, let it callous for a few days, dry out on a bench or by the windowsill. And you just, same idea. And pop them in. And there you go. So you keep planting like that, making incisions, popping plants in until you get to the midpoint, at which point you can actually hang the basket from a secure structure and then you can plant around the base of the succulent sphere. So here's one I made a year ago and I've just kept popping bits in, adding more cuttings, more plants as I go. Eventually it starts to fill out um, and mature. And as you can see, it's actually grown over pieces of the metal, grown over the hessian. So obviously there's many ways of displaying succulents and this is just one way. And I hope it's given you some inspiration to do something similar at home.